Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome back to uh, Mead Public Library, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, sponsored April ukulele classes. And uh, I'm Lil Rev. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight, or as they say in show business, it's a pressure to be here, or a pleasure to be here. So I'm glad to be with you guys, uh, and thanks to Mead Public Library. Um, we are the constant every Monday and Thursday night for ukulele instruction with a different subject uh, every night. Uh, and so tonight we're going to be exploring a really fascinating side of uh, ukulele playing, and that is slurring your chords. And so we're going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, uh, primarily, we're going to work with this idea uh, as it relates to chording, because uh, this is going to be the most applicable to a, a wide variety of different um, uh, levels of players. Once you get into slurring and sliding on individual notes, uh, then you're leaving uh, all the people who don't play melody out of the equation. So we want no euchre left behind. All right. So uh, before I begin, I just want to uh, take a moment or two to uh, to remind everybody that um, the music for this class tonight uh, can be found by going to littlerev.com, scroll down. There you will find a little dark colored box that says Sheboygan U Club on it. Click on that. Our Google Drive has got a number of different folders in it, and you'll see one dated for tonight, uh, sliding your chords class. And uh, there's four pieces of music for tonight. So uh, you still got a moment or two to go ahead and do that. If you don't have this music in front of you right now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this technique that we're about to do. So this will buy you a moment or two yet before we begin. And uh, uh, before I do that, let me just say that uh, we have some exciting news for all of you who have been tuning in to these classes. Uh, um, I want to share with you that uh, Mead Public Library would like to continue running uh, these online Facebook Live classes through May because uh, many of us will be uh, observing stay-at-home uh, orders through at least the middle of May, if not longer. And uh, my daughter, for example, won't be going back to school um, this school year, will be homeschooling. So we're going to be here, and we want to be um, someone that you can count on. And so uh, Mead Public Library and myself plan to continue running Monday and Thursday night classes, a different subject every night. And, uh, and so I, I want to, you know, let you know about that and uh, make notes. Pretty soon we'll put out a new flyer that will list all the upcoming classes. So just if you're enjoying these uh, Monday and Thursday nights, I hope that you'll uh, pencil them in and continue to study ukulele with me all the way through May, okay? All these classes are free. You do not have to tip. You see my sign. You don't have to do that. Um, though it is very much appreciated in this era. Okay? So uh, let's get started tonight. And um, the idea of sliding your chords. Let me just explain this to you because some of you are wondering, what is this all about? And in the 1920s, during the vaudeville slash Tin Pan Alley slash Broadway era, the teens, 20s, 30s, when the ukulele was uh, a primary instrument, uh, when it was experiencing the sort of intense interest as it is this last decade or two. And uh, ukulele players like Roy Smack were busy playing chord melody solos. <laughs> sound hear that that kind of slur slide so there's a sort of propulsion that happens with ukulele players um, at an intermediate kind of pro level where um, you're hearing all these different things happen but yet many of these techniques don't require you to be at an intermediate level or a pro ukulele player you can break them down into simple components and start to integrate them into your playing. And you can do what the pros do, wherever you're at. And so this sound where you hear the slide, it gives a real momentum, a chugging, kind of propulsive nature to our strumming. And 
it's very different than just say strumming a G chord down up down up like we all do right which would be right so if we're just strumming a G chord that's what it sounds like but if we add a slur or a slide to the to the chord suddenly it's got this kind of momentum that's really infectious it's exciting it's it's driving it's propulsive these are the words that keep coming to up in my mind so listen to the difference now where i slur and strum on a g chord it adds this sort of tension as you go from a half step up into the chord itself that really is exciting when you're playing now if you practice what i'm going to show you tonight in a matter of weeks to a few months this is something you'll be doing on a regular basis and it'll become a natural part of your strumming vocabulary you won't even think about it you'll just start slurring those chords and your sound will be a little bit more exciting than just going down up when you add the slur okay so how do we do it that's the question you're all here for tonight okay and we want to know where you're coming from tonight so please uh, without an audience in front of us um, your thread comments make a big difference we love reading them and uh, your questions Jenna my wife was here with me we'll uh, write them down and hold them up if there's an important question type it into the thread otherwise just say hi I'm coming to you from Chicago tonight hi I'm coming to you from New York wherever that really matters and uh, we appreciate it um, so let's begin okay here we go we're gonna start out making a G chord now and I'm presuming that everybody knows how to make a G chord um, I got two fingers one on the C string one on the A string second fret and then I drop my ring finger down onto the third fret of the E string okay that's a G chord right so I'm gonna take that G chord now and we're gonna do baby steps into what a slide is and how 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 to do it okay what I should note is that slurs and slides with chords um, happen with closed or movable chords all right you're not going to do this with an open C chord you're not going to do this with an open F chord you have to be able to understand that there are open chords that you cannot move up and down the fretboard they don't become other chords and then there are closed chords often referred to as movable or inverted forms of chords bar chords all those work so anything that you can move up and down the neck a B flat all right as it moves up the neck it becomes every different chord uh, a G bar chord right or a G bar chord right okay or a D like a full D bar chord up and down the neck becomes different chords that's why I've given you this in the handout these are the three most common chord forms that move up the neck okay your B flat shape your G and your D there are many others and all those others you can slur and slide just the same this is just step one tonight okay so you got to first understand that the slurring and sliding doesn't happen on open chords only movable chords okay important point number one now make that G chord again here we go all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it up a half a step. So instead of playing it on the second fret, I'm going to play it on the first fret. Okay, and I'm going to hold it there. And then I'm going to count one, two, three, four. And we're going to slide that chord. We're not going to lift our fingers off of it. We're just going to slide it right till it's where it's supposed to be in its intended spot. Okay let's do call and response I do it and then you guys echo me from your homes okay so watch I'll strike it make a G shape back it up a half a step I'm gonna strum down and then I'm gonna slide my fingers into the regular G position okay so let's try that now on the count of four right so here we go I'll do it then you guys echo me one two three four good okay again I do it you do it one two three four okay good that's it okay here we go again one two three four awesome 
okay? Now what about if we did a different chord shape? We're gonna be working with G a lot tonight, all right? That, that's a good place to start for this. But another common um, bar chord is a seventh chord. So if you just bar on the second fret and put one finger down onto the third fret of the A string, that's a D seventh, movable D seventh chord, right? If you move it up to the third fret, it's an E flat seventh, fourth fret, it's an E seventh, fifth F, all the way up to the seventh fret, it's a G seventh chord. It's a movable chord, okay? So what if we took that D seventh and we backed it up to the first fret, okay? When we struck it there and slid it into, the, into that intended spot, it would sound like this. I do it, you do it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sounds like the beginning of Jailhouse Rock, right? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Awesome, you're getting it. One, two, three, four. Yes, that's it. Okay, it's almost there. Okay, try it again. I just want you to experience a, a couple different shapes, and then we'll go back to G and kind of focus on G tonight. One key is enough when you're learning this, okay? Uh, but because we're playing in G, D is a key is a chord that will go with this key, okay? So so here we go one more time. I do it, you do it. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. When it gets really exciting. Right? Okay, it got a little sloppy there, but I was trying to hint at the Adams family sliding up the neck. All right. So go back to that D7 now. All right. Watch. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, the next thing that you're going to be wondering is, okay, little rub, that's all good and fine, but how do I do that while I'm strumming? How do I keep that going, that momentum going? Because a, a lot of these slurs and slide, like when I was doing the do 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 which is going to be a whole other class onto itself, that kind of syncopated strumming and sliding, that gets real complicated. Matter of fact, if I'm not even warmed up, it gets sloppy, right? Okay, that's more fancy, like advanced strumming stuff. So with slurring and sliding at a basic level, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a pattern, and I want you to listen to this pattern, okay? I'm going to just strum, and every so often I'm going to back that chord up and slide into the G. So watch. Once I get going with my strumming, I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Every time I'm getting ready to go to that one, the first beat of each measure, I am trying, attempting to slide into that G chord. And that's what I want you to try and do with me now. Okay? So I'm going to keep this going for about a minute and see if you can do it. I start out strumming on the G. And every time I get back to that one, I back it up and I slide right into this intended shape. So watch me again. space longer we could go we could go we could go one two three four 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 so do the slide
wide than, than two full measures. And then it'll give you time to kind of regroup and get back so that you can start to get used to doing this because some of you it's going to throw off your rhythm a little bit okay and uh, until you get used to this that kind of slur and slide it might throw you a little bit okay all right what you do then is you go back to square one and you go one two three four one two three four one two three four two three four two three four and just take it a little bit slower Okay, so here I go. I'm going to strum one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then finally, after two measures on that one, I'm going to go into it. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two. Now, those of you who study roll strokes with me, this sounds really good too with your roll strokes, right? You can go two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Two, three, four. So go back to that class's archive. Those of you who weren't with us for the roll strokes can study some of that stuff too. And my point is just to show you how this stuff can kind of all get applied at the same time you can start to just combine some of these different techniques after you've step by step practice them they start to become more like muscle memory okay so again i'm backing up going to square one all right watch at its very most basic striking with a downbeat okay one two three four two three four one two three four two three four just getting ready to get that sound your next step is to start strumming and be able to do that while you're strumming on various movable chords okay i'm very repetitive when i'm teaching this because it seems awkward it feels clumsy when you first start doing it but watch i mean watch what happens when you really start to get moving along right So if I'm playing Boil Them Cabbage Down, you know, that's a melody. And I was accompanying that, I'd go. Now watch what happens when I add sliding chords to this. has a lot of excitement to your to your backup you know to your strumming do you have to slur or slide that much no I'm over exaggerating it because I just want you to see what happens a little bit goes a long long way you don't have to slur more just choose one chord in a song and say whenever I play that movable chord I'm gonna try to slur or slide my chord okay so maybe I might go do you remember when we met, that's the day I knew you were my pain. Wanna tell you, did you hear it? Wanna tell you, did you hear it? Wanna tell you. So whenever I go to G, I be, might slide into it. Then it just gives it a really nice spice to your arrangement. It's something else to add to what your drum hand is doing. These are, this is a sort of thing where it's both a strum hand technique and a fretting hand technique because you can do this on the upbeat or you can do it on the downbeat. Okay, and sometimes I do strum slide by playing up. Try, how does that feel? If you take a G chord, back it up to the first fret and play up and then slide, does that feel more rhythmically comfortable than on the downbeat? Watch. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. I like to do that on the offbeat. That's kind of nice, but not everybody's used to that. So you might go one, two, three, four. 
three, four. Do the downbeat, okay? All right, so you're starting to be able to hear now when somebody's strumming and it gets a little bit of the slurring in there, it sounds really nice. It's almost time for us to start looking at some of the songs that I have included in tonight's curriculum, okay? So I just want to do a little bit more of a pattern with you and see if you can get that, that slur and slide going in there, okay? So we'll start out on the G. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So you could do every one beat of every measure. And if that doesn't feel good to you, like it's happening too fast, then try it every two measures like I did earlier, right? So you would get, you, here's with just one, every one, every measure on the first beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. How's that feeling? One, two, three, four, 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 one. Starting to feel the pattern? Can you hear the pattern? strum a song and you start just doing this naturally, then you have done enough repetitions of this simple kind of practice because it has become muscle memory and, you know, it's starting to get integrated into your playing, whereas before you're just going... And I trust that you can hear the difference. Like, it's not wrong when we're strumming and you're just going down, up, down, up, down, up. I never mean to belittle that. That's the hallmark of what all of us do. And, um, and so, you know, that, that's the heart of it, right? But all these little things we can add are, as I often say, another color added to the palette of the painter who's trying to create something beautiful. And, and the more colors you have, the more of a, a pretty you know, piece of art you're going to create. And so it is with strum hand and fretting hand techniques. The more you can learn, the better it's going to start to sound. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go do one every two measures like, like we were doing earlier. And then we're finally ready to start applying this to a song. Okay. Here we go. So we'll start out just strumming down up regular on the G chord. And after we've done a total of eight counts, right, two measures, Four four will come in on that first beat and slide it. This will give those who are struggling a little bit more room to breathe before they slide each time. The hot shots can do it every measure, right? Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. up while you while this hand is strumming this hand gets ready and goes right into it okay one two three four one two three four one you, can you hear the difference one two three four one two three four one two three but once you get rocking in a song right Sadie Green of the Bamp of Duane So, I mean, it really starts to create that great energy, all right? Once you start, you can throw it in as much as you want once you get good at it, all right? So, when you're sitting back at home in your lazy boy recliner and you want to do two things at once, then you make the G chord, back it up, get your roll strokes ready, and go. And you can practice doing your roll strokes and your slides, okay? Uh, but start thinking about the other chords that might work. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, we're gonna try the song, uh, the Crawdad song. Now some of you guys might have missed this uh, because it, it got added earlier today. So if you don't have the Crawdad uh, printed out, it's on the drive. You can print it out later. It's a very easy song. 
You can try and just do it by ear if you don't have this in front of you. All right? And, um, and so the chords in this song are G. Then it's going to go to a D seventh. Both of those you can slur or slide if you like. And then there's a C chord, an open C. You're not going to slide that. But anytime you see a G chord in the music in front of you, or uh, if you're playing by ear, a G or a D7, you could slur or slide. My, my goal for you is to at least just try it anytime you're on the G chord. All right? So I'm hoping enough of you are actually looking at the music and you can play along with us with me now. Okay? So here we go. All right? Now, remember with the delay... With the you know the internet and the connection delay, we might not be exactly playing together, but this is our uh, this is our attempt at it. Okay, here we go. Ready? So now I'm doing a boom chuck strum. and every once in a while I might slur a slide. See my hand moving like that? A boom chuck strum is done by striking the G string and then brushing down on the rest of the chord. And it goes boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck. You could get away with doing all the uh, Hank Williams, all the Johnny Cash songs. It's a great simple strum, right? So watch what happens when I add slurs. If it's easier for you to not try to do the boom chuck and just go, then do that from home and don't do the boom chuck because that's easier for you. But try to get a slide in once the song gets going. Okay, here we go. There they are. Ruby and Riley, world famous Black Labs. They like to everybody to know that uh, they're grateful for you being here with us tonight. Here we go. to just mess around with where you want to put those slides. You can put them anywhere. Okay? So let's try it. the next verse. What you gonna do when the lake runs dry now, honey? What you gonna do when the lake runs dry now, honey? Honey. What you gonna do when the lake runs dry now? Slide, slide. What you gonna do when the lake runs dry 
sit on the bank and watch a crawdad die. Slide, slide, slide. You, ultimately, you're going to make this choice about where to put the slides, right? I, I'm overemphasizing because I'm trying to teach you. But really, the reality is exactly what I said earlier. Just pick one chord that you really want to focus on until you get good at it and then go like I'm doing G and D seventh every time, right? You don't have to do that. Just do G and strum the other chords normally and leave the slide out. Okay. Now there's one more verse at the end of this page. You get a line and I'll get a pull, honey. It's a, it's a repeating verse. Here we go. You get a line and I'll get a pull now, honey, slide. put your right hand out in front of you now okay reach around give yourself a pat on the back okay that's right you did a good job and so you know you use those songs that have a lot of space in them to practice your slides don't choose a song where the chords are changing every other you know every two beats or three beats you know don't get too jazzy initially unless you're ready pretty advanced and the concept seems pretty clear to you Okay, a song like Crawdad's song gives a lot of breathing room for the beginner to try and slur and slide those chords. Um, and by the way, you know, speed isn't everything in, when employing these slides. So if a song is slow, kind of like this one, you get a line, I'll get a pull now, honey, still sounds good, right? But then if you take this to a bluegrass jam and you say, hey, let's do crawdad song it's the same chord progression as mama don't allow and you say let's do it bluegrass tempo and you start going mama don't allow no guitar playing around here mama don't allow no guitar playing around here we don't care what mama don't allow play that guitar anyhow sounds good at any tempo fast or slow so once you get it it's going to serve you well Okay, so that's it for the Crawdad song, and uh, now we're going to move on to another example here. Okay, and uh, we've got a nice group of people um, taking this class tonight, you know, almost 100 people, and so there are a lot of people studying, and um, uh, this is a great opportunity to learn something new and improve your ukulele playing. And um, when I first started playing in the early 90s, you know, there were a couple of old flea market books from the 20s and 30s, and it was hard to figure this stuff out. And uh, and so it wasn't until I started hanging out with a lot of other ukulele players that I started really seeing the true potential of this instrument. Um, I started out playing with a flat pick in my hand because I was a guitar picker. Pretty soon I let that go, and I let the strum hand do what it wanted to do, and started picking up all these other things, but I could hear them on those early 78s. When you hear a uh, ukulele lady, you know, um, by Honey Duke and his uke, or, you know, you hear some of these cool old songs, Ukulele Bailey and Roy Smack. Um, it's just fabulous the way a lot of this stuff sounds, you know. But look, even in rock and roll, if we were to go. Did you see how I slid up to that, that, that third chord? And Louie Louie, I might go. So you can throw this in just about anywhere you want in any style of music. And the more chords you know up the neck, the better it's going to be because you'll be, able to, you'll be able to cover some space. That brings me to an important point before we go to the next song. Okay, M Learning to move your chords up and down the neck make playing the ukulele a lot more interesting. It's not mandatory and a lot of people just don't want to do it. But the more you learn, you know, what these chord shapes become as they move up the neck, it adds a lot of variety. And if you want to get into chord melody playing and a lot of different styles of music, which will ask you to move up the neck, um, it'll just be a lot more user friendly. 
And so um, I, I encourage you guys to do that. And uh, um, I think you're all on the path because you're here tonight. So I, I, I give you a, you know, that proverbial pat on the back. Okay. So distance. Distance is when we look at sliding the chords, we've been working with half step denominations, right? We've been going a half step just like that. When you get good at this and you know, like here's a G chord right here, right? But I also know that I can make that G chord barring it here. I could make a G chord right here, right? I could take that B flat, move it all the way up the neck and make a G chord way up the neck with that shape. I could take my D shape and move it up to the seventh fret. And there's a G chord right there. So when you know what those other chords are, you can make great leaps of faith, right? Like pretty soon I'm going to do my pogo stick challenge again. And I'm not going to do two or three steps. I'm going to do like four or five steps, right? I'm going to make a great leap of faith, right? My wife is frowning at me right now, okay? <laughs> She's like, no, you're not. <laughs> but let me show you what I mean, okay? The benefit of this is that it gives it a little more of a sliding sound. Like early on, I tried to do a little bedodio do I wasn't quite warmed up, okay? Okay, that kind of stuff. But for example, boil them cabbage down, right? Here's the accompaniment. Watch me now. I'm going to play the same thing, but I'm going to slide further. Okay, here we go. Watch me now. Or I could just stay in first position right up here. If you buy into the idea that that this this half step or more creates this sort of infectious propulsive drive when you're strumming that's not inherent in a basic down up strum then you you kind of buy into you know the timeshare condo right of ukulele playing because it's just something that you can count on you can lean on it it adds a little bit more to what you're doing so that brings us to the next song now are you guys ready for this Okay, all right. So the next song is going to be uh, is going to be Folsom Prison Blues. Okay, so we're going to look at Folsom Prison Blues, and that's another one in the key of G. And uh, while you guys are getting that ready, I just want to answer a question about there are a bunch of different questions here. So um, as I'm sliding them around here and looking looking them over, the first question was, can a chord We've been sliding up the neck, right? We've been going this way, right? That's the way that makes the most sense, right? That's the easiest way to slide is to go right up the neck, right? Either on the downbeat or the upbeat or or vidodio doing, which is multiple. Vidodio doing is on starts on the upbeat and ends on the upbeat and has a tremolo like effect. Okay, that's going to be a whole class all by itself because it's very syncopated. All right, but anything we do is going up the neck. Can we do sliding the other way going? It, I suppose you could, you know, I mean, guitar players do this all the time where they go, right? They do this sliding back the other way. What I would say is that uh, the, the idea of sliding the opposite I, I, I don't do it and, and, and I don't see anybody else doing it that really uses this technique on a regular basis so um, whomever asked that question tonight it is a good question you know it's a yin and yang of life if you go one way can you go the other way and so this is an important thing to try and figure out maybe you could be the person to make it work the other way but from a momentum and a gravity perspective, everything goes down, right? Everything goes down much easier than it goes up the other way. All right. So play around with it and, and, you know, come out and see me at one of my classes or festivals when things get better. 
and uh, show me how you made it work, okay? But it's, it's a good question to ask, okay? Another question was, uh, when the boom, when boom chuck strumming, are you sliding on the one of the measure? So if I'm gonna boom chuck, yes, I'm sliding on the one of the measure. That's right, so I might start out just strumming, boom chuck, boom chuck, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's almost like, two, three, four, one, It's, I know it's hard to say, right? Sometimes when you. Yes, it starts on the one. And going, it's kind of moving right into that two. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, and we'll get back to some of these other questions, these good questions you guys are asking tonight. Thank you for those. Let's take a look at Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Okay, and um, there's hardly a ukulele club in America that doesn't do some Johnny Cash songs. Uh, this is like apple pie, right? It's like Hank Williams. And um, so. The chords in Folsom Prison Blues, if you have never played this, are G, C, and D seventh. Okay? And um, we're going to make a regular G chord, regular C chord, and a D seventh. Now, the chords that we can slide are G and D seventh. G and D seventh. Okay? So, if you only do one chord, that's fine with me. The ambitious amongst you do two chords. Okay? So, here we go. Here we go. We're going to just do a what we call a common stroke. And that's just your free hand downing up in it. A little bit of down, a little bit up. Now what you'll notice is that there's a lot of room for the on the G chord to slur, right? Hear the train up coming, rolling around the band. Sun shines and I don't know when I'm stuck at Folsom Prison and time keep dragging on. But that train keeps rolling on down to San Antonio. Now, one thing that I'll tell you as you start to get a feel of this is that for those of you who are melody players, that's a whole nother lesson, right? You know, like when you listen to that, that little riff in there that Luther Perkins is playing, what is he doing? He's, he's sliding, right? So melody players slur and slide too, right? That's a standard practice. So those of you who are playing melody want to think about that as well. And those of you who aren't will eventually aspire perhaps to playing melody and you'll remember that. Okay. See it? See how I'm sliding in between those notes like that? Okay, so just something to keep in mind that that tension creates a really interesting sound. Okay, here we go. Back to the song from the top. train a coming, rolling around the band. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Man, I'm stuck in Folsom Prison and time keep dragging on. But that train keep rolling on down the sand and drone. baby mama told me son always be a good boy don't ever play with gun but i shot a man in reno just to watch him slide 
slide. tonight, you'll start to get to a point where you'll be able to anticipate these slurs and slides, okay? Now life, life will throw you some ups and downs, my friends. And just when you think that everything is going absolutely perfectly, there will be a little bit of rain. So you got to learn how to roll with the punches in this lifetime. And you got to learn how to slide, man. Sliding is, it's, it's, you know, crucial to our character as human beings. If we don't slide, we're stuck, right? You know, we're gorilla glued to the floor. We don't bend like the trees do in the wind. We got to learn how to slide. And that helps us roll with the punches, baby. Oh yeah, and you're gonna find me right here every Monday and Thursday, at least through the end of May. I hope you're gonna slide through this corona crisis with me. That's right, because we are gonna get through this. All right, we got one more verse now. Or no, we got two more verses. I bet there's rich folks in a fancy dining car. Probably drinking coffee, smoking big cigar, but I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. Are you sliding? But those people keep on moving. There it is. And that's what tortures slide. Wherever you can fit that in there and make it work for your own rhythmic ability. That's what you want to do. When you know you're going to be on a chord for a long time, you can put those slides almost anywhere. Okay? Last verse now. You guys are doing a great job. They freed me from this prison. Railroad train was mine. Probably move it on a little farther on down the line. Far from Folsom Prison. That's where I want to stay. And I'd let that lonesome whistle blow my blues away. Can you feel it? better than the chicken dance. Slide. Slide. Better than the jitterbug. Slide. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You guys did it. Okay. And you did it with, you know, some barking dogs and all kinds of other stuff happening too. So, and that's the thing, right? Uh, you got to some observe the chaos until it's beautiful, right? And, uh, um, and just be in it. So, uh, so now we have done a crawdad. We have done Folsom Prison, and uh, we've answered a few questions. Another question that came up in the thread was: um, Do the brand of strings that you use um, enhance or discourage the act of slurring and sliding your chords? And um, and so, yeah, you know, some uh, certain certain types of strings, you know, might not be so agreeable with your own chemistry we all have you know like the oil of our skin and our hands and whatnot um, you know interact with these strings and so you got to find what feels good you know like like um the kind of strings that are gonna just really allow you to glide and move around are like Sarah and Craig Mazel's GHS uh, artist series uh, those are nice strings that are really nice and slippery and you can move your hands around on them. Um, gee, uh, I like uh, Ken Middleton's Living Water strings are really cool. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know, why don't you message me offline 
and we can continue this conversation. But I would say, yeah, some of the fluorocarbons might um, feel kind of chalky. And so you got to play with that a little bit and, um, and see what works for your anatomy. But I would say some of them do, um, might slow you up a little bit. Strings are a science. They're worthy of a, you know, a 10 page article easily. All right. And becoming a good player is as much about knowing what kind of strings work for you and the gauges you use, um, as the size of instrument and what you use them for. Okay. Those are all classes onto themselves, I suppose. All right. Um, let's move on now. And, um, I'm going to give you a few more sort of examples of sliding in some common popular songs. Uh, and then we're going to do another song here, but uh, we're coming up. We got about, I don't know, eight minutes left or so here. And I hope everybody's having a good night tonight and enjoying this instruction. I hope it's clear enough. The sound quality is good and, um, the lighting and everything is working out. If not, feel free. Um, sometimes your own connection can make things a little warbly and weird. Try watching it at a later date. Okay. Again, I want to repeat the music for every class will be had on the Sheboygan U Club Google Drive. Go to LilRev.com, scroll down, you'll see a little box, and it'll say Sheboygan U Club. Click on it, and there you'll find the music for the classes. Now, um, in the coming days, I'll update um, some of the curriculum for the upcoming classes. And I'm going to try and do that so we're a little further ahead of the curve rather than a day or two before. Okay, so in the next couple, by Monday, cer certainly I'll have, you know, the next two weeks up there. All right, as I said, Mead plans to sponsor and continue these classes um, all the way through the end of May. And so uh, God bless them, and I, and I thank them for bringing the ukulele community together on this platform. And uh, please, you know, express your gratitude as well through your comments on your thread. They are very much read. Uh, watched and appreciated by both myself and the library staff. Okay, um, Shebo Sheboygan is a great place to be. Come and visit us. We've got a lot to offer when things get better. And uh, let me know you're coming. We'll go down to the beach and play some tunes together. Okay, all right. So uh, study your movable chords chart. This is homework. This is just a place to start. These are just major chords. I like Roy Sakuma's chord dictionary out of, if I had to choose one chord dictionary, but there are a lot of movable chord charts that are on the internet. Um, this is out of my Hal Leonard Uke Method book too. And um, go up the neck and say the names as they change, memorize them. Then add your seventh chords that are movable and your minor chords that are movable. Say the names as they go up the neck, commit them to memory. It's better than crossword puzzles, okay? All right, and uh, let's uh, let's do this last song here. We got a couple minutes. Uh, by now, those of you who have joined me many times, uh, you know you see the sign on the wall there, right? And uh, um, I'm not gonna clobber you over the head every time we get together here. I'll simply just say one time tonight, um, your tips. If you learn something that you're gonna keep with you for a long time and it was worth your time. First, thank the library. If you want to uh, lend a tip, it's very much appreciated. This is how I'm making my living now these days. And, uh, and I'm very grateful for the tips after these classes. Okay? All right. So here we go. We're going to do the Rock Island Line is a mighty good road. The Rock Island Line is a road to ride. Okay? And... Uh, um, when I did my muted ukulele class, I was talking about train sounds, remember? Right? So don't forget that if you took my muted ukulele class. Otherwise, go back and check the archive for that and study that because that could be a great intro for this song. You could go... And then you'd go. All right, now we're on the G chord. 
And like the last song, there's a lot of room before we're going to change chords. Okay, there's a lot of breathing room to try and slide. And I want you to look for these kinds of songs in your daily ukulele and your songbooks. Songs that stay on one chord for a while, it gives you a lot of room to slur and slide. Okay? Here we go now. When you get good at it, you'll be able to catch those short phrases like that very, very short time on the D7. One uminoto. <coughs> Voice got a little dry there. Thanks for bearing with me. All right. Here we go. Oh, the Rock on Line is a mighty good road. Rock on Line is a road to ride. Rock on Line is a mighty good road. Want to ride, got to ride like a fight to get the ticket at the station. Oh, rock on Line. All right, let's try that one more time and then we'll add the verses. Okay? Rock on the line is a mighty good road. Rock on the line is a road to ride. Rock on the line is a mighty good road. Want to ride, I got to ride like a find to get the ticket at the station on the rock on the line. See how I'm sliding on the G and the D7? Here we go now. Get ready, all you roll stroke players. You ready? Jesus died to save our sin. Glory to God, we gonna meet him again. Oh, the rock on the line is a mighty good road. Rock on the line is a road to ride. Rock on the line is a mighty good road. Born to ride, I got to ride like you find to get the ticket at the station. Rock on the line. I'm sliding on the G and the D7th, if you didn't hear me say that already. What would this sound like if I didn't slide? Rock on line is a mighty good road. Rock on line is a road to ride. Rock on line is a mighty good road. Home to ride, I got to ride it like you find to get your ticket at the station. Alright? So you can hear that when you add that slide, it adds a real propulsive drive to the song. That is really worth adding. Okay? Are there some songs that don't need slurs and slides? Yes. Okay? Your homework is to figure out which, where they work and where they don't. Okay? All right? Here we go now. We're going to do a maybe right and a maybe wrong. Stop time. Maybe right and a maybe wrong. No, you're going to miss me when I'm gone. Oh, the rock on the line is a mighty good road. Rock on the line is a road to ride. Rock on the line is a mighty good road. Long to ride. I got to ride it like a find to get your ticket at the station on the rock on the line. ABC, ABC, double X, Y, Z. Cat's in the cover, but he can't see me. Oh, the rock on the line is a mighty good road. Rock on the line is a road to ride. Rock on the line is a mighty good road. Want to ride, I got to ride it like you find to get your ticket at the station. Oh, rock on the line. Some of you are saying, little rev, how do I know where to slide? If you find songs where the chords don't change every, you know, every couple beats, you got a lot of room, breathing room in there, like Crawdad and like Folsom Prison, and you can throw those in almost anywhere, whether it's on the first beat of every phrase. Um, you know, you got to play with an experiment to get a sense of how this feels as you're integrating this into your style. But eventually, you know, you're going to get... See that how I slid up to that F chord? Right? 
So I use that slide and that classic riff. There's just an unimaginable number of applications for this technique. It's up to you. And that's the beautiful thing about all this, is that you can take it and make it your own and do whatever you want with it, suitable to the kind of songs you like to play. Okay? So, you know, I showed you Sea of Love, and I showed you Proud Mary, and I showed you Louie Louie. Um, here's one last little example, okay? I'll do a little bit of On the Sunny Side of the Street from Dorothy Field, 1929, right at the start of the Great Depression, right? Talking about hard times and economies lately, all right? Well, here was a song of hope, and watch for the slides now, okay? Grab your coat, get your hand, leave your worries on the doorstep and just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Watch it now. On the sunny side of the street. Okay, so you see how just a little bit subtly is added to the song and it goes a long way. If I wasn't sliding, then it would just be grab your coat, get your hand, leave your worries on the doorstep, and, which is nice. Some songs don't need slurs and slide. And sometimes just a real little bit in an arrangement is all you need. You don't have to keep doing it from chord to chord. That's overkill, okay? Too much of a good thing. Uh, then it's not, the novelty effect kind of wears off. So this is going to conclude our studies for tonight. And uh, these hours just fly by like nothing. I hope you all are enjoying these forays into all these different facets of, um, you know, ukulele madness right we are ukaholics hello my name is little rev and i'm a ukaholic that's right i am and so i thank you for spending this time with me tonight um i encourage you to uh to visit my website littlerev.com uh check out my books and my cds i've got at least a half a dozen ukulele albums fountain of uke and uke town fountain of uke 2 10th anniversary drop baby drop happiest way to be sad uh, sing Song Daddy, uh, my Strum Along book. There's a lot of good stuff there, and I appreciate your orders. It's helping to sustain us at a time when I would be all over the country right now. I mean, Gaithersburg, Maryland, right? Uh, Memphis, uh, you can roll Jamboree out in Winnipeg. I'd be all over in the next six months. And so it's nice to be home with my family. I'm grateful, and I'm looking for the silver lining in this, just like you. So... Until we meet again, thank you, and I love you like a ukulele. Be well.